All right, so you can see the heart of the Houston Culture Mound is starting to take place. Howdy folks, thank you for tuning in to Homesteading at the Black Sheep Meadow. I'm Brent. And for our new subscribers, or our new folks that are watching, uh, to get y'all up to date, myself and Amber are attempting to grow or produce 80% of all of our own food here on the homestead for this year. Now, what we've found is, is through our open garden, our raised bed or container garden, uh, the Hugo Culture Mound that you see here behind me, uh, the Hugo Culture Mound has outproduced everything else. I mean, an easy four to one. So we're here in uh, the later part of June, fixing to be in the first part of July. And we have seen 100 degree temperatures well into probably the 15, 18 day mark, somewhere in that neighborhood. And as you can see behind me, the Hugo Culture Mound that I built last year is still doing phenomenal. Uh, the, the squash plants that are left on it are uh, still feeding off the moisture that's in the mound. It's been very drought resistant. It's a uh, excellent way to garden. We're definitely gonna in, in include this into our process for next year. And today we're actually gonna add on to this mound. So um, if y'all would bear with me, I'll show y'all how I do my Hugo Culture setup. Uh, first off, we're gonna talk about what a Hugo Culture mound is. Uh, translated from German, it's actually hill care. And it's where basically you're gonna take a whole bunch of wood material like tree trunks, limbs, sticks, uh, twigs, logs. You're gonna put them all into a pile. And then we, I'm, I'm actually gonna add some wood chips on top of that to fill in the voids. And that wood over time is gonna break down, releasing nutrients into the soil that's around it. But more importantly, that wood, which I prefer to be a uh, partially decaying or rotten wood, is gonna act like a sponge. So it's gonna hold moisture. Therefore, I don't have to irrigate as often to the to the pile or to the mound whenever I actually have plants growing in it. So um, starts off with wood. Then we're gonna do sticks, li uh, little small twigs, limbs, uh, leaves, maybe some grass, and then I'm gonna put a layer of topsoil over the top of it. After I get the topsoil on it, I'm gonna cover the entire mound with our compost. Um, I've got several composting videos out there. One of my favorite composts is actually a sawdust and grass-like material um, and we're going to completely cover the mound we're going to add on to the one here behind us i mentioned in my last huga culture video that location was key uh, it's in an area that had very low traffic it's actually near some power lines where i couldn't build or put anything else in that piece of property anyways uh, so this year we're going to add on to the mound we're going to bring it a little bit closer actually right where i'm sitting now uh, my reason for this is, is as you can see, it's going to be shaded in the afternoon hours of the day. Uh, that's probably been our biggest setback with any of our garden is the heat. Uh, we, I mean, we just can't battle the heat. So if we can get out of direct sunlight for the afternoon hours in the hottest part of the day, uh, the plants tend to do a little bit better. So I'm going to get started building this huge culture mound today. Um, as you can see, the tractor behind me, I have to go swap some of the implements on it. So we'll get started with that. And then uh, I'll... Uh, touch base back as we're starting to build the mound on all the little details, so follow along.
All right, so you can see the heart of the Hugo Culture Mound is starting to take place. I've got four or five very large tree trunks or logs in the middle, and I've already got one scoop of wood chips to put on the outside. The wood chips I like to use just to fill in all the voids and cracks, because after we put our topsoil and our compost on, I don't want our topsoil and compost going to the middle of the pile. So I'm probably gonna do one more scoop of wood chips on here, and then I'm gonna start with some twigs and uh, topsoil and compost. So here we go. So you can see I got a couple of bucket loads of wood chips installed on the pile. Uh, this year's pile is going to be just a little bit larger than the pile that I did last year. After referring to some of my elders that I often go to for advice, they've all told me that I need to make my huge culture mound larger. And uh, large is the name of the game because obviously it held, it'll hold more moisture. All this wood behind it is just going to act like a sponge for, for water. So I'm going to put a little bit of leafy greens on top of this and then I'm going to start with our uh, topsoil and then we're going to get to our compost on top of it here in just a minute. All right, so we got our comp our huge culture mound complete. Uh, you can see I got the topsoil and this lovely material. This is all our compost. This is actually my favorite compost. It's a um, mixture of green grass clippings and sawdust material. I've got several composting videos. If you haven't seen them, go check those out. Uh, this huge culture mound will not be ready this year for us to plant anything in. This is gonna be a 2024 calendar year uh, planter. So uh, we still got, I'm gonna let it rain in a couple times and I'm probably gonna have to top dress this maybe once or twice more with some more compost on top once everything settles in. Uh, but I fully predict for 2024, this is going to be a vegetable producing dude right here. So uh, you can see also that this new Hugo culture mound is probably about twice the diameter of the last mound. You can see the, the last year's Hugo culture. Um, that being said too, as long as uh, I don't screw up and knock the pile down or anything else like that, I should be able to get 10 years out of a pile like this. 10 years are better. And every year it should get better and better as the wood in the center of the pile fully decomposes and releases all of its nutrients. So folks, I encourage y'all extreme, please get out there, do something to be self-sufficient, uh, do something to provide for yourself, you know, guarantee your own food supply. 
uh, become ungovernable is my favorite word. So if y'all wouldn't mind, if y'all are liking our video or liking our channel, go ahead and subscribe, like today's video. If y'all have any questions on any of this, leave them down below. Myself or Amber, we'll make sure to get in touch with y'all and answer anything you have. Uh, in the meantime, we'll see y'all next week.